Good day everyone, welcome back to the channel, Frank Olo Photo, where we talk everything knives, knife reviews, unboxings, demos, and just general knife knowledge. Today is going to be a fun one, because I'm going to finally test if the famous compound ferric chloride, also known as iron chloride, which is a steel etching compound, if it can make Damascus steel knives pop. Now, of course, you see there's a lot of other items in front of you, and I'm going to explain why there's so many items, but first, if you haven't already, Feel free to subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up button, that like button, that notification bell, so you'll know when the next video is coming. Now, the reason I have so many items in front of me is because ferric chloride, for you chemistry nerds out there, I'm going to be putting a bit of a data sheet at the bottom, so you can read all about it. But as you can tell, it isn't exactly the safest compound to deal with. And so we want to make sure we have our PPE, our protective equipment, our personalized protective equipment. I'm going to be using an N95 mask. COVID, that's why I have it. This was one of the first masks that we said was going to work, so I still have a few of these. I'm gonna be using gloves. I'm gonna be using safety goggles, i.e. my sunglasses, but I'll make sure to wash them afterwards. I'm going to be using painter's tape to put it on the handle of the knife to make sure that we don't get any of the ferric chloride on the handle of the knife. In fact, we don't want it anywhere but on the steel of the knife, on the blade itself. Some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol which we'll use to clean the blades with this piece of cotton. And then at the very end, what's in this mason jar, is I have a whole lot of baking soda and water, which I shook the solution to make sure that we can have it homogenous. And essentially, I'm going to be dipping the blade into the solution to neutralize the acid because ferric chloride or iron chloride is a very acidic solution. In fact, when mixed with water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. Now, it's a very complicated compound to kind of explain, but essentially it's a metal etcher. Uh, it binds really well to copper, nickel, and brass. Um, now we have another steel here which isn't copper, nickel, or brass, but we're going to try it out anyways. So the two knives that today I'm going to see if ferric chloride will make the Damascus pop are the following. We have a Masami Asai knife. So Masami Asai, or Asai Zan, he's one of the founders of the Takufu Knife Village in Exigen. This is a 75 millimeter VG10 pairing knife. As you can see, the Damascus is very subtle. So I'm hoping that maybe the ferric chloride will add more contrast to the blade. And then, because when I read up about ferric chloride, it said that it works best on copper, brass, and nickel, I have a knife that's exactly all that, other than the core steel. This Sajisan 180 millimeter bunka, copper, brass, and nickel. So what we'll do is I'm going to switch the angle up so you can have a closer view of what's going on on the cutting board. I'm going to make sure I have my protective personalized equipment. I'm going to clean the blade. I'm going to make sure I have my mask on, my gloves, my sunglasses. We're going to tape the handles. And then what I'm going to do is, um, so maybe another point of reference is this ferric chloride is a pure solution. It hasn't been mixed with anything yet. And because I'm afraid of potentially going a little bit overboard, I'm just going to add some ferric chloride directly to a scot towel and just wipe the blade. I'm not going to let the blades sit in for any amount of time. Why? Well, because it's always more difficult to um, go further, make a mistake and bring it back than not make a mistake and say, maybe I should have let it sit for two minutes. So that's going to be our method that we're going to use. And I'm pretty pumped. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are. This is gonna be our workstation for the next little bit. Before I put on my PPE, what I wanna do is, with my bare hands, it's gonna be a lot easier to tape the handles. So I'm gonna tape the handles right now before I switch into both the mask, the safety glasses, and the gloves. Now we don't need to tape the whole handle, but what we do wanna make sure is that we don't get any of the ferric chloride on the handle as much as possible. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just put some little pieces like this. Perfect, I feel good about that. Now it's time to put on the personal protective equipment. Let's start with the mask. Just in case we don't want any fumes getting in the way of our nasal cavities. Put on my safety glasses. Looking good, looking good. And now time for the gloves. ASMR. 
Now we're about one step away before we use this ferric chloride. We actually want to use this rubbing alcohol and make sure that the blade is as clean as possible, also as dry as possible. Let's let that sit there for a second. Same with the Saji. I said it was 180 millimeters before. It's actually 165, so apologies about that. There we go. We can put this aside. Let that air dry for a second. Rubbing alcohol off the set. Let's use one of these tea towels and make sure it's completely dry. All right, a little bit nervous, but here we go. So now we're going to open the bottle of ferric chloride. Let me make sure I have a nice workstation here. The other thing we're gonna do is make sure that the baking soda and water have mixed together very well. I can open that. Let me see that that's in the middle of the frame. Perfect. Ferric chloride, give that a bit of a shake. Alright, here we go. There's no going back now. I guess there is. But... Now, if you notice, I'm not using the cutting board because I don't want to get this stuff on anything that I can't clean really well. Come on. Leave. See the color there. Let's put that down the side. Now we're going to use the Scott towel. We're just gonna dip it in the ferric chloride. We're gonna wipe the blade, and then that's it. Then we'll see what happens, and then we'll put it in the neutralizing solution. Whew, I'm a bit nervous, but here we go. Oh damn, I think it worked. Holy no way. Let me make sure I put some here. No way, I can't believe it. I mean, I read enough about this on Reddit and the threads, kitchen knife forms. Let's hope I didn't ruin it. All right, I'm gonna dip it in the neutralizing solution. Right. I mean, you saw what the Damascus looked like at the beginning of the video. It's so subtle, so many layers, but so subtle. It's VG10, and right now, the way I'm looking at it, it almost looks like the core steel is carbon steel because of how dark that got. And then the contrast for the rest of the Damascus, it's hard to see too because I got my sunglasses. But I'm hoping when I remove my sunglasses, all is good. Let's grab a clean Scott towel so we can dry it. It is a little sticky. I think I remember someone told me about that. You know, like I'm trying to clean the solution and it just feels a little bit, a little bit gummy. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and time will tell, but I believe I was told that this isn't a permanent way of etching it, as in like it's, the ferric chloride has bonded with certain chemical atoms in the steel, but as I wash the knife with soap over time, this will go away. Look at that. Time to jump on to the Rainbow Damascus Saji. I feel like if I wasn't using a Scott towel, it might be easier to put on a more consistent layer of ferric chloride. Like if I were dipping it, for example, in solution. So I'm hoping that doesn't get in the way. All right, we're back. 
that was fun, but there was definitely a few lessons learned and some behind the scenes footage that you didn't see. So the first behind the scenes footage that you didn't see is each knife actually went through two phases of etching. I etched, I neutralized in the baking soda and water. I wiped them off, it felt a little bit gummy. So I used quadruple zero steel wool and I just quickly polished it. Didn't like the way it turned out, did it a second time, liked the way it turned out, same process. And that's what led us to basically the footage that you're gonna be seeing here on screen. Did the same thing for both knives. Now apparently the most dangerous aspect of it wasn't the ferric chloride. It was myself because as I put the tape around the uh, bolster of or the ferrule of both knives, this one in particular, this little petty 75 millimeter, I just I nicked the tip of the butt because it's just so close to the handle. So I got myself a nice little cut to remember this day by. Something else, uh, let's see, some more lessons learned. Essentially, the importance of having a properly sealed handle, right? So I'm putting tape around the bolster, around the ferrule, but there was a little bit of liquid that seeped in between. I would not want to know what that would look like if the ferric chloride actually found its way into the tang. It's, again, very acidic, can be very corrosive over time. That would probably not be great. So make sure that if you're going to be trying this, you're going to be trying this on a knife that has a properly sealed handle and that there's absolutely no void, no gap, no holes between the tang and the handle itself. Otherwise, um, one of the other things is, can I recommend this as a way to make your Damascus steels pop? Not really, to be honest, because it can go either way. I had no idea what the results were going to be and it might have been that I would have applied the ferric chloride and change the way my blade looked in a way that I was gonna think was unappealing. Now, thankfully, as I wash this more, as I use this more, the ferric chloride coating, even though it bonded to the um, metal atoms, it's going to wear away, and I think I might be getting back, essentially, what the knife looked like before the ferric chloride, but I'm not sure, right? So it's a bit of a gamble. I wanted to test it out for you guys so that you can see if you wanna take the risk or not. Uh, what's the other thing that I'd have to say? That's about it. I think the Saji turned out much better than the SI Zan. The SI Zan is still super subtle. The biggest difference will be on that cutting edge of the knife where it looks a little bit darker. But otherwise, there you have it. You're using ferric chloride to make your Damascus steels pop. If you guys have ever tried ferric chloride on your Damascus knives, let me know in the comments below. How did it turn out? Were you happy with the results? Do you wish you had some more information before diving into it? I did look into it quite a bit, but in terms of metallurgy, I'm definitely not like a blacksmith who really knows everything about the steel and therefore how ferric chloride would react with that steel. I was really tempted to try this because there's a lot of blacksmiths I follow that, of course, they'll layer steel after steel, and when they show you the final billet, it just looks plain and boring almost. And then they dip it in the solution, they pull it out, and magic. What's that magic? Apparently it's ferric chloride. I've asked enough of them to know that there's probably maybe another compound that's also used, but ferric chloride I believe is the most common. Uh, they probably also dilute it with water because if you don't want it to be as strong of an effect as the way I've applied it to my knives, you can dilute it as well. One part ferric chloride to four parts water, so on and so forth. If you guys like this video, again, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and otherwise see you next time.